So you've just been accepted to university and you have no idea what to expect. Trust me, I know the feeling. In this video, I'm gonna share 10 things I wish I would have known before I went to university. I mean, you might as well learn, learn from my mistakes instead of committing them yourself. Okay, so before I give you the 10 things I wish I would have known before I went to university, let me give you some context. So picture this, it's the 23rd of July, 2020. It's a nice sunny evening here in Budapest and I'm casually walking down the street when I get a text message. You have met the required points for BME Computer Science and Engineering. Honestly, I had no idea what this course was. I didn't even know if I wanted to go. I just applied because the application process was free. What surprised me even more was that I was accepted to a government scholarship, meaning that my tuition was to be free if I enrolled. So a few weeks later, I was like, fuck it, might as well enroll and see what this course has to offer. So in comes my first year in university. Okay, so here are the 10 things I wish I would have known before I went to university. Number one, university is hard. This is kind of a cliche, but yeah, it's pretty hard. This isn't high school anymore and you're actually gonna have to sit down and learn some things. I didn't really even do much in high school. I just did the minimum that was required for me and then I do my thing. Well, I guess you can't redo that in university. You're just gonna have to buckle up and do your work. You're really gonna have to prepare from lesson to lesson if you wanna succeed. Okay, so knowing that you have to prepare is one thing, but how do you actually do it? Well, this is where point two comes in. You will have no idea what the hell is going on. Great. Okay, so let me explain why this will happen and what you can do against it. Okay, so point number one. There's a ton of content within each subject. I mean, so much so that there's no, no way a human can go through all of it. And I mean, no human should, even if they could. Okay, so in the beginning, I'd say just trying to find which content is relevant and which isn't, and then just move from there. It's gonna mean that you're gonna have to spend more time with the subject than usually, so there's overhead. But in the end, I think it's gonna pay off. What's funny is despite there being a lot of content, if you're taking something like engineering, let's say, that's what I do, you're just gonna end up understanding the subject explained by some Indian kid on YouTube, not by your professor. Shout out to this channel for helping me pass my exams. Okay, so point number two, you won't understand a lot of things. So back in high school, it was mostly enough just to pay attention in class, and then I could just go play CSGO in the afternoon. Meanwhile, in university, you still have to pay attention in class, but that's not enough. When you go home, you have to take the time and look over the material. Oh yeah, also, there are gonna be tons of lectures where you're just sitting there and you have no idea what the hell is going on. Uh, yeah, that happens. The best way to combat this is just to prepare from lesson to lesson. This is because the material that you've learned is heavily built on the material from the previous lectures. So let's say in history class in high school, you would learn about a bunch of random topics and there's some vague chronological order, but in uni, no. In uni, every lecture is built on the previous ones. So it's really important to learn from class to class. Oh yeah, and I almost forgot. You won't understand how the system works either. Every subject's gonna have a different website, different professor, different email address, different requirements, different everything. You also won't understand how the subjects work, you also likely won't understand how credits work, how averages work, how your scholarship works, any of that if you have those. So in the beginning, I wouldn't worry too much about it. It's not really important in the beginning, only when you get your grades eventually, so don't focus too much on it. What I like to do personally is I like to spend the first week or so just organizing everything that the professors have told me about the subject. So like when the exams are, what's the website, how can I log in, etc. Now, this is gonna take some time in the first two weeks, but after that, it's gonna save you so much time when you don't have to ask in some random group chat for the teacher's email. Okay, so point number three, the first year is the hardest. Okay, so I've already told you how the beginning is not gonna be easy, or university in general is not gonna be easy, but trust me, it gets easier and easier as you go on. Now, the subjects themselves might get harder, but I mean, once you know how to learn, once you know how to take notes, how to pay attention to lectures, it's gonna become much easier. So the best way to make your university life easier is to organize everything and manage them into systems. So figure out how you're gonna learn, when you're gonna learn, what you're gonna learn, how you're gonna take notes, how you're gonna prepare for exams, how you'll manage your time, etc. Another great way to get over your first year is to just make friends, because going through hard times with your friends sucks, but going through them alone, it sucks even more. So just put yourself out there and make new friends, initiate conversations, and, and try to find people who you're gonna struggle together with because you're, you're gonna struggle. <laughs> okay, so point number four, you're gonna have to know how to manage your time. So there are a lot of things that you're gonna want to do. You're gonna want to hang out with friends, learn for subjects, attend lectures, you name it. 
but there's a certain point where there are too many things that you want to do and there are too many things that you have signed up for. So I'd say what you should do is just write down everything that you want to do and prioritize them in order and then just rank them in, in terms of priority. And then whatever's at the top, you're going to probably make more time for that. So another point part in time management is just to keep a nice routine. So what I, I'd like to do is I have a morning routine and an evening routine, which is always the same. I mean, unless I have to go somewhere, which I usually don't. And this is basically just to like frame your day. So there's always something that's consistent. This could be like when you wake up, when you go to bed, things like that. So this is loosely connected to managing your time. Sometimes you just have to sit down and do the work. Sometimes there isn't just like a hack which you can use to do a four hour project in two hours. You just have to sit down, get your shit together and just do it. People are also terrible at estimating how much time they need for a project. So I'd say when you're trying to estimate how long a project will take, just think about it in your head. Once you've got it, now double that time. So always assume that what you're doing will take twice as long as you originally intended it to be. Point number five. Drop the ego. This is probably single-handedly the biggest lesson I've learned in the past year. When I finished high school, my ego was at its peak. I had just graduated, I had a girlfriend, life was going well. I had a full summer in front of me and I had no responsibilities, so I could just do whatever I wanted. When I decided to enroll in this course, I imagined in my head that I would just go there and just crush everyone, be the top of my class, be the best at everything. Well, spoilers, that never happened. Now look, there are a lot of dumb kids in high school, so if you're surrounded by a lot of them, it's not that hard to feel that smart. However, in uni, this is not the case. Everyone who's there is there on merit, or their mommy and daddy paid them in, which is less frequent, at least in, in Hungary. So mostly everyone's there on merit, meaning that Everyone is there because they're smart, which means there will be a lot of kids that are way smarter than you and you just pale in comparison. Let's just say I got humbled pretty quickly after talking to some of them for a few minutes. Now, I don't think I was the dumbest in the room, but, but at times it definitely felt that way. So I'd say instead of feeling bad for being the dumbest in the room, I'd say just embrace it and just be grateful that you can learn from people who are smarter than you. I'd say the biggest difference between students and university is their attitude and their mindset. I think you can be the smartest in the room before you go to uni and then still fail class. And you can also be the dumbest in a room in the beginning and then pass. So I kind of learned this lesson firsthand, even though I wasn't the best, but whatever. That's beside the point. Before uni, I learned some Python. I wasn't great at it, but I mean, I knew the basics. There were a bunch of, pe bunch of people in my group in my closed group who had never learned it before. So I was like, okay, well, I guess I know Python already, so what's there to learn? Well, there was a lot to learn, except I didn't see it because of my ego. I thought I was the best programmer ever. It got to a point where we had a midterm exam and I failed by one point. And then you had people who have never even touched a computer who through hard work and actual dedication passed the midterm with like, like 70% or something like that. If that wasn't enough, I had two opportunities to, to retake the midterm. I failed both. I failed one by like five points and another one by two. So I was pretty close in both cases, but still like even at my third chance to retake the midterm, I was like, this is easy. I know programming. I just got, I just got unlucky, whatever. Well, this led to me failing the class and now I have to retake it next year. I was blinded by my ego so much that even though I had an advantage compared to the kids who have never even touched a computer, they still ended up getting a much higher score than I ever did. What also fueled my ego was the first two like quizzes or like small midterms we had. I got max points for both and I saw other kids who also knew programming and they got like, I don't know, 70% of the points or something like that. So I was like, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, I knew the basics, but I had to keep that up which I didn't. And then even the kids who have never even touched a computer before, never done any programming, they overtook me pretty quick. So I say just drop the ego. You're there to learn. So you might as well just forget any preconceived notion that you have about yourself and be open to what you're there for and what other people are doing. Simple as that. So yeah, just please don't make this mistake. Okay, so number six, don't compare yourself to others, compare yourself to yourself or as Jordan Peterson would say, compare yourself to who you were yesterday, not to who someone else is today. So as I stated before, 
everyone has a different past. Everyone has learned different amounts of programming. There are people who are smarter, dumber, lazier, more motivated, whatever. They are on a separate journey compared to you. So just don't focus on their journey, focus on yourself. You have a finite amount of energy. So you might as well spend that energy on yourself, focusing on what you can do to yourself instead of focusing on what someone else is doing to themselves. So the goal is to do the best you can and just make progress compared to yourself, not to others. Define your own success. Don't let your success be defined by someone else. Stick to your own goals and stick to your own definition of success. Okay, so number seven, don't do things out of the fear of missing out or FOMO. There are gonna be a bunch of clubs, a bunch of parties, a bunch of everything, and there's no way you can do all of them at once. Trust me. There are times where it's completely fine to just not go to a party or not attend a club meeting or whatever. The fear of missing out is just a fear. A fear is gonna be conquered. You're not really missing out, you're just afraid of missing out. Also, people have different goals than you. This kind of ties back to not comparing yourself to others. So if someone's priority is just to party all day, every day, and not do any learning, that's fine. But you're on a different path. So just do what it, what's important to you and not what's important to others. Also, your, your body's gonna thank you if you don't drink every day, trust me. Okay, so point number eight. It's okay not to be okay. University is pretty stressful. Everyone feels stress, everyone has their low points. Whatever you're feeling or whatever you will feel, it's completely fine and everyone goes through it. You are definitely not alone in what you feel. So there will be moments where you wanna quit, just give up, just sleep. Just do something else and that's completely fine. Everyone has those moments. Don't overwork yourself and don't stress too much about things. It's okay to admit that you're struggling. So the best thing to do is just to seek help and look for people who are struggling with the same thing or, or who just want to help and have a chat. At the end of the day, we all have the same problems and we've all gone through hard times. So just talk to others and ease the tension. Number nine, persevere. So there will be times where you're just gonna be like, okay, I've had enough, I'm gonna quit, F this, I'm not doing this, I'm just gonna drop out of school. Now, if you're not enjoying what you're doing, then I'd say, okay, fair enough, you can leave, whatever. Maybe it's not for you. But I mean, most of the time, it's just a feeling. You're not really making a rational decision if you just, at one moment, decide that you just wanna quit. Because that decision is just based off of emotion and not based on your mind. So just don't leave it up to a feeling and really think it through if you wanna leave. There will always be low points in your life and there's it's no different with university. I'd say the solution is the same as the last one. Just seek help, have someone to talk to, talk to your parents, talk to your friends, talk to your, your old classmates who are in different universities perhaps, learning something else, but they're also probably going through the same thing. So yeah, just, just talk to people, honestly. University is not meant to be easy. If it were, everyone would have a diploma, but not everyone does, so. It's all about a game of persevering. And finally, number 10, journey before destination. So the destination is clearly to have a diploma, have a degree, a paper, whatever, that proves that you know what you're talking about. But if that's all you're focused on, your life is gonna suck. Let's just say it that way. Also remind yourself that nothing meaningful comes easy. So the best way to reach a destination is just to enjoy the journey and you will forget about the destination. And once you get there, you're gonna feel grateful for what the journey had to offer. Just find enjoyment in the small things in your journey, like the friends you make, the funny moments you have in lectures where you're giggling and the teacher wants, wants to send you out, the parties for sure. I mean, university is kind of all about the friends you make on the way, the network you build for yourself for the future. Like sure, they say university is the best time of your life, which I don't know, I just started, but do you really think it's because of a piece of paper that you get at the end? No. It's probably because of the friends you make on the way, the moments you have, the unforgettable adventures you go through, the hardship, because nothing that's meaningful in life comes easy. These are the things that you will remember in, I don't know, 30, 50 years, 60 years, however long you end up living. So also just remind yourself that nothing meaningful and fulfilling in life comes easy. You have to fight for it. I mean, just the fact that I'm making this video right now, I mean, starting it was a was a pain. <sighs> Talking to a camera is pretty difficult, but I think I'm getting better now. At least I hope, probably in a few years, I'm gonna look, up, look back at this and be like, what the hell was I thinking? Anyways, so yeah, I'd say that about wraps it up. I am currently on a summer break and I am going to attend my third year, thir third semester, sorry, in university uh, this September. 
I think going forward, uh, what I'm going to concentrate the most on is, again, not letting my ego slip out of hand. Some ego is nice to have, but just don't have too much of it. I'm gonna be more comfortable with reaching out, talking to people about how I feel, about how they feel, trying to help more people come to terms with their feeling, things like that. I'm also going to focus more on making more order in my university life, having all my subjects tied together, things like that. So the main takeaway here is that university is a journey. You're not gonna enjoy it if you're only focused on the destination. It's gonna be hard, it's gonna be tough, you're gonna wanna give up, you're gonna love it. It's gonna be a roller coaster of emotions, probably daily even, but it wouldn't feel as good. Success wouldn't feel as good if it weren't difficult, if you wouldn't have to suffer for it. At the end of the day, life is struggling, either way you put it. You're either struggling for something that's fulfilling or you're struggling to cope with the thought that you never did anything meaningful. I'd say university is worth the struggle. Okay, so if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. I'm gonna be making more videos. I have like 10 that I'm currently working on, at least in one way or another. Uh, hopefully my skills improve by each video. So yeah, see you guys.